Well, hello to everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining the NRI's coordination session, which is um, an assessment session, I would say, of the IGS 2017 work that has been produced so far, and um, kind of our look toward the future, what we want to achieve uh, over the course of the 2018 year. I do see that colleagues are still joining us, but I would start since we are we have only one hour, so we will need to be all concise and precise in delivering our remarks. So the purpose of this coordination session is for the all NRIs to meet in one room in one place. I think we have some online uh, participants as well, colleagues present from different communities uh, from different NRIs. Um, and, uh, and to liaise directly with the IGF Secretariat, with the, with the MAG, thanks to the MAG chair, and also uh, with our colleagues from, the, from UNDESA, and of course among yourself. So with that, uh, if you agree, I'm just going to quickly go through the agenda that was built by the NRIs in the past couple of months uh, in a bottom-up manner and completely endorsed by, by all recognized NRIs. So we would um, open this meeting with quick remarks by the MAG chair, by the colleagues from UNDESA and by the IGF Secretariat leadership. After that, the NRIs will be uh, feeding into the uh, following items. So the first one would be in terms of the NRI's joint work, what worked well in 2017 and what should be the NRI's objectives for 2018. Should all NRI's come up with a topic of mutual interest for the NRI's joint substantive work for the next year? What should be the nature of future col collaboration among the NRI's and the NRI's and the IGF? What is or could be the role of regional and sub-regional IGF in a broader framework of interaction between the NRIs, feedback and suggestions on current and future support from the NRIs, uh, to the, from, sorry, from the IGF to the NRIs, and then obviously we will just summarize our outcome, outcomes in a form of key messages that will be sent toward the wider community. So I will just uh, here be in a very um, formal role of giving the floor and uh, I will be reporting from this session. With this, I would like then to invite the MAG chair, Ms. Lynn Stenamore, to open this meeting. Welcome. Um, I will keep my remarks very, very, very short because as Anya said, we have a compressed time frame. It's really important that we hear from everybody here in the room. I think the only thing I'd, I'd like to impart is that um, Certainly I, as MAG chair and the MAG, um, are very, very appreciative of all the work the NRIs <coughs> do over the course of the year to help advance issues of, of internet um, and, and, and internet governance. Um, it's extremely valuable, extremely useful. Um, understand that it's also um, a fair amount of work um, in a volunteer capacity, um, which makes everything that the NRIs have actually accomplished this year that much more impressive. So the work is very important. It not only, of course, helps advance those issues locally, um, it really feeds in and supports the global agenda and the global discussions here, which is, which is critically important. Um, it is at a minimum a win-win, and frankly, I think the win is probably bigger on the global IGF side um, with respect to all the contributions that we get from, from all of your efforts. So we're really looking to understand how we can continue to kind of deepen the relationship um, where we can make some additional progress um, in terms of supporting you and your activities. And uh, I mean, I think the, the growth has just been tremendous. And of course, we should fully recognize the efforts of Anya in the focal point role and then so many of the other kind of really key instigators, if that's an appropriate word, in the, the community, you know, notably, of course, Marilyn Cade, who has been such a you know, a big, a big force here in the, the development of the NRIs. So with that, I, I will stop trying to keep um, to short comments, and I can pass to Armin Plum, who's with uh, DESA, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs in the UN in New York. Armin. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I will also be short. I will follow the trend. Um, my director, um, Mr. Zhu was here last year addressing you, and he can't be here today, so he apologizes for that, but he briefed me, of course, about uh, the importance of the, the NRIs and the whole movement that you have put in place. Um, I just want to convey that we are in New York very encouraged to see how this, this uh, NRI is growing 
not just in numbers, but also in quality and in outputs, and we're very pleased to see that. So um, I will put myself in listening mode for most of the time. I will write down um, what messages you have, what uh, requirements you have, what requests you may have for us, for DESA, for the IGF Secretariat to help you build on this in the future. And with that, I'll hand it over to Chenga Tal. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'll echo the words of um, Lynn and um, Armin as well. And just to say thank you very much for all your hard work. And we do strive for this to be a um, relationship that is not just NRIs to the um, IGF, but both ways. And we reinforce each other and we help each other along the way. Um, <coughs> Most of you, I think I've spoken to, and you've spoken to me, so I won't say much, and just thank you. Thank you very much for your remarks. Uh, with these remarks, I would then uh, open the floor for the most critical part of this meeting, and which, what is the purpose of this meeting at the end of the day. Uh, which is to hear from you, first of all, on the, on the first agenda item, which is um, in terms of NRI's <coughs> joint collaborative work, what worked well in 2017, in your opinion, and what should be our objectives for 2018? So you can just indicate by raising your hand in case you would like to intervene. Uh, maybe the interventions could be up to two minutes maximum, depending on the number of interventions for the CEI and, and this meeting on time. Uh, Marilyn. Marilyn Cade, representing uh, as the co-coordinator of the IGF USA and joined by Dustin, who will probably answer some of the other questions. Uh, what I think worked um, uh, really well was the very intense support that we got from Anya as the focal point and from all of you uh, on the team, all of you, because we got special treatment and we needed it. And because you will notice when you look at the publication that our focal point put together that the majority of our uh, new uh, NRIs took place in the last three months. So the fact we had a well-run network, a well-run, efficient communications process, an extremely responsive, <laughs> responsive focal point um, meant that we could absorb brand new initiatives into the network and by the time they did their NRI, they no longer felt new. And the practical support that that provides and the coordination, the platform, but also the calls that take place. The second thing that I think worked very well, and I will turn to others, is the fact that we are so committed to bottom up and rough consensus. So it does take us more time sometimes but that means that we have broad agreement. I don't, we will never get to unanimity, and I don't think we should strive for that, but we get really broad commitment. And I think that is a, um, uh, one of the things that worked absolutely wonderfully. One of the things that didn't work so well is that we weren't clear enough about the purpose of our uh, mailing list and others bypassed the focal point on a number of times, creating confusion um, so I would really strong, and other people actually used our mailing list to market themselves. And I find that very annoying myself, but I think it's very unfair to um, the focal point and to us. I'd like us to have a mailing list that is just about w our work. If we need to have a separate um, Skype chat on something where people say, hi, I just arrived at the blah, 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 Okay, but let's make this a working mailing list. And I think it's our fault because we didn't set up any rules. So that's my second point. And then the other thing that I'd like to ask is that we, um, um, I think it worked well to have Changatai and Lynn and Anya also attending uh, the ICANN meetings from time to time where I convene IGFSA and I convene the um, IGF coordinators that are able to attend there. And I think that worked so well this year. I'd like to see us do more of that next year because it brings you closer. Even if you can't attend the, um, all the NRIs, you'll at least be able to see some of them there. 
Thank you very much, Marilyn. Um, Armenia, IGF, Liana. Thank you, Liana Galstian, uh, coordinator for Armenian IGF. Uh, I would uh, like to join uh, the comments Marilyn just made. Absolutely agree about the uh, focal point support. That was uh, really great um, during the year and the calls uh, we have had. Uh, uh, I would also like to say that the collaborative sessions between the NRIs was really well uh, novelty. Uh, we collaborated, we uh, worked together, we uh, have the um, topics uh, which was in common between the different countries, uh, yet we uh, got a very good sessions together. So that was really very good thing uh, for this year and I would like it to, to be continued for the next as well. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. Sala, Pacific IGF. Thank you, Anya. I'd just like to encourage the NRIs, uh, particularly with you as the focal point, to look at a mechanism to consolidate the work that it does and feed it into the high-level political forum that's happening in New York uh, next year and to work closely with uh, Mr. Armin Plum, who's there on the panel, to see that that actually goes through because uh, Noting that the, we've had 12 IGFs, and in fact, the first, uh, uh, the first regional IGF is actually older than the global IGF process itself, the Caribbean IGF. So you can actually look at how you can consolidate some of the, the best practices and, how it actu and tangible examples of how it actually meets the SDGs and showcase to the world the strength of the multi-stakeholder process especially with the IGF multi-stakeholder process being a, within the UN uh, mechanisms and being one of the oldest. Uh, so I thought I'd just add that. And also to congratulate you on the excellent work that you're doing and also to thank Marilyn Cade and all the other NRI coordinators in the room for the work that you're doing this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sala. Um, let me see, yes, can we go here? Okay, uh, I'm Dr. Chin and from uh, University of Xi'an Jiao Tong Lipu University nearby Shanghai. Uh, I'm the MAC member of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF, but I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, really want to talk about uh, API IGF, but I want to talk about IGF CN. Because uh, we just heard uh, this September, uh, sorry, this June night. And, and there was, uh, I think, IGFCN was set up. And uh, actually, we are a bit curious about uh, the function and the, the organization of IGFCN because the whole process is not a transparency. And uh, actually, uh, when I tried to uh, join, the, join the IGFCN, and they only accept the two categories of the membership. The first one is the individual, the second one is the corporations. So there's uh, no category of membership of the like a civil society and technical community. And also when we look at the, their websites, it didn't show anything about their organization structure, who is the board of the, uh, board of the director of uh, member and the also MAC, you know, members. So we, I just curious to, as uh, academics, you know, uh, how, how this process was set up and any clarification from the secretary. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you're bringing um, important questions, but since they are on individual basis, I would love that this meeting focuses on the issues that belong to the network and collaboration between the NRIs, and maybe we could uh, uh, meet immediately after this session if your schedule would allow, or any time during the day to discuss those matters. Thank you very much. Uh, Mary, West Africa, IGF, and Nigeria, IGF, and then we'll go to China, IGF, Colombia, IGF, go to ICANN, and uh, to the network, IGF. Thank you very much. My name is Mary Uduma, and I'm um, from Nigeria IGF, as well as I um, have, um, have a role in the West African IGF, even at the African level. First, I want to take, thank the, the panelists, and moreover, the MAC chair for allowing us to do the collaborative sessions. It's been very, very productive. We have laid good foundation. And I know that by 2018, we should build on what we have started and we'll get more. We shared experiences mm -hmm. and we have key takeaways and it, it, it's been very, very educative, informative and productive. And I, I believe that if we continue that way, it will also have. I want to thank Anya 
Anytime I send a mail, we have infrastructure. Oh, give us um, WebEx, and she responses very quickly. So it's been very great. And uh, Shangatai as well. Please, you've been doing so well. Uh, we, need, we, we, we need to continue in this way. The, ne the network is growing, and there's no holding back. And that is the legitimacy of the IGF at the, at the, at the local or the national level. So, and uh, we coming from the, the environment where government plays a lot of uh, role. So our governments are now accepting that this is the way to go. So we continue to encourage the network to grow and those that have not joined will soon be part of, I, I had a lot of inquiries when I was at the booth, some coming to ask where, uh, what we do, what we do, how they will start their own IGF. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary, for these kind words and concrete suggestions. Uh, maybe now to go to China IGF, the glory of, of, of the Holy Land. Okay, thank you, Anya. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Anya, Lian, and Chingdi Tai, because uh, I think uh, uh, this IGF NRI platform really collaborates with different uh, nations and regions. And during this uh, this year, we collaborated with uh, other NRIs to make very successful uh, sessions, and uh, like blockchain and IPv6. I think this is like a big community. We can emphasize more collaboration, uh, not only in the technology, but also the uh, the governance issues. Um, so what what I want to also I want to feedback to the lady just. Uh, uh, talking about uh, the idea of China. Uh, actually, we are open to all the society, but the thing is that we don't promote that much because we are just a start this year, and not many people know IGF China yet. But I think it's what we are working on, and we are want to drive this to make uh, more people to join us. And also, the, the door is open to all the China society, and as well as we want to collaborate with the international society. Yeah, thank you. Lori, thank you very much. Maybe we can have a quick meeting after this. Thank you. Uh, maybe now to go to Colombia and IGF, Julian. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Julian Casas Buenas uh, from Colombian IGF. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, what worked well in 2017, all the support from the Secretariat and other MAC members for bringing global perspective of our um, IGF. Uh, it was very important during our uh, annual forum. We did three training courses in internet governance, uh, two on our governmental organizations and one during our, our annual meeting with more than 72 participants. Um, action steps for 2018 includes to become a reference point in discussions regarding issues related to internet governance throughout Colombia and uh, to develop uh, training spaces for young people and, be and beginners uh, to internet governance. Take the IGF to different regions where it currently has no presence and at the same time facilitate the participation of regional representatives uh, during the national forum. And to look for new participants, especially young people and a small and medium sized enterprises. Uh, expand and maintain remote participation. Uh, we have this year more than 200 remote participants and we want to extend uh, uh, this uh, wider. And to attract new members, uh, the IGF should ident identify innovative ways to address the benefits, benefits of participating in the internet governance environment. Maintaining independence and plurality of interest, promoting the importance and validity of the multi-stakeholder model its benefits and limitations. The role of civil society is important in achieving this, including promoting it at a regional and international forums. And ensure that the results of the discussions held at the national level are shared at regional and international IGFs as we are, as we are, we are doing this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julian. Uh, I think I've said to, to Aiken now, Andrea, Aiken is supporting a lot of the NRIs, and then we will go to the Netherlands IGF and then Polish IGF. Thank you, Anja. Oops. 
Um, and yes, so um, as, you, as you mentioned, ICANN has been supporting uh, not only the global IGF, but also several national and regional IGFs across the five uh, continents. Um, in my experience in Europe, we have been supporting other in kind or with um, money or with our participation, uh, almost all the national IGFs in Europe, for instance. So we do the same in all the other regions. Uh, to answer your, uh, the, the question on number one and probably number four, um, what worked well and what could be um, improved for 2018, I think one thing that really worked well is the toolkit. And the toolkit really did um, a tremendous work in uh, promoting the multi-stakeholder model, in teaching what is the multi-stakeholder model, and letting this IGF to be real bottom-up models and processes. So this is a good, a, a tremendous advancement. <laughs> what I would see useful for 2018 and going forward is to continue the same exercise and to use the global IGF as a platform to share what worked well at the national level. I see that many small national IGFs, they do have struggles in terms of securing funding, in terms of establishing a legal representation in the country to get this funding, and or um, in how to involve other stakeholders from, uh, from, from their own country. I see often that they are very good in securing sponsorship and participation from global organizations as ICANN, ISOC, RIPE, but then they have a little impact in getting those, some, the same um, participation from the local stakeholder, from the local, local telecom operator, or the internet sector business. So I will use the same approach of the toolkit. I will recommend to share what worked well in each national IGF to tackle one of those issues. How did you secure your fundings? How did you involve the local government? How were you able to get the telecom provider of your country to give 5,000 euros or provide or provide uh, support for um, a cocktail, something like that. And that will be extremely helpful. And in the same vein, I think, and it made me think on being here, these are, these are, these are the same places where the first WSAS prep comps were organized. The WIGIG was an unintended consequence of the WSAS. The IGF was an intended consequence of the old IG, uh, WSAS. And almost the, the national regional IGFs are com um, unintended consequences of the global IGF, but th these are all positives. So I think that probably the, the next unintended consequence really positive is having a national regional IGF an, a real impact on a legislation, on producing a clear outcome in one country. We need to get these things out. I'm sure that will come from one of those rather than the global ones. That's my assessment. But we need to give them visibility. And we, we need to use the platform of the, uh, of the global IGF to do that. So to look and probably we have all the contacts, ask them, send a question. Are you aware of any outcome can, that you may track and put down? A minister participated and right after the, the, the discussion on freedom of expression legislation in our country improved and we had that as a result. So this one will be extremely important. And I stop here if we have time to uh, also address number four. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, I told, I think, Arnold from the Netherlands IGF. Thank you, uh, Anja. And um, on behalf of the Netherlands IGF, I would uh, really um, thank you very much for your hard work as uh, leadership, as, as a focal point uh, for the NRIs, supported by uh, your other colleagues, Chiang Etai, uh, Uendessa, Armin, and of course our MAC chair, Lin. Um, we see an enormous growth of NRIs, and as, as, a, as a national IGF, um, it's, it's, it's tremendous to see this. It's already mentioned when we met uh, the Under Secretary General. This is one of the tangible outputs of the IGF, and we should continue that. Um, that is also uh, and was, was the reason and still is the reason for the Netherlands government not only to, to support you uh, with our words, but also with money. And uh, you know that, but perhaps the others in the room are not aware of that, but last week the Netherlands signed a multi-annual agreement with the UN covering the period 2017 to 2021 
through which the Netherlands government, which is a, a, a co-organizer, co-coordinator of the national IGF, is paying every year from 2017 100,000 euros. That's the equivalent of 118,000 US dollars. It's, 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 thank you, Marilyn. It's no, it's, it's, it's no blank or check. And there has to be done some work. Uh, but it underpins our commitment to, a have, uh, to, 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 to continue this uh, multi-stakeholder uh, approach and to have a, a strong, solid, and stable, and independent IGF secretariat with permanent staff. So we're not going to pay too much money for consultants. We would like to see a permanent staff uh, working very hard, like you already are doing, to uh, expand this network. And um, we see uh, uh, an enormous uh, progress. And uh, then this network is, is working very well. Um, there is somebody in the uh, NL IGF secretariat who is, uh, for us, the focal point. And she told me that uh, she's very happy with the, uh, the, the exchange of, of, of views and, and, and the, uh, the email traffic and the calls. You and done. That's working very well. But now it creates a problem for us because she, uh, she said there's so much uh, email coming in with follow-up work. Uh, we have to hire some people to get this all done. Uh, but that's a problem we have to tackle and uh, that's our problem. But we will find a way to, uh, to get that uh, sorted out. Um, for 2018, what are the prospects? I think th that will be dependent upon uh, uh, other work which is going on in uh, two working groups of the MAC. And one is dealing with uh, the more strategic planning of the IGF, because at the end, I, as I see it, is that we will have an IGF, whether it is the same or different, I don't know, but if it is a different one, then uh, of course the national and regional IGF should perhaps link to this uh, new work scheme which is coming out. We don't have clear the picture of how it shall be uh, at the end, but uh, that will be a factor to be, uh, 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 to be cleared up as well in the future. Thank you. I just want to come in for one quick second to say, uh, obviously the five-year commitment is extremely important and that it provides uh, you know, some sustainability in future. Um, the amount that Arnold quoted is actually nearly four times what their average contribution has been as well. So it was a, a significant step up and a much longer commitment. And I think the important thing is that he's actually said he will allow us to use that, if you will, for a call for action <laughs> from um, some of the other donors as well. So, you know, again, just appreciate very, very much strong support, Arnold. I think we will now go to Igor from the Polish IGF and then Italian IGF and then. Good morning. Well, first of all, a, I wanted to extend a big thank you for all your support. We are a new kid on the block and um, it, we wouldn't be born without uh, great support from, from Anya, from Lynn, from Cengatai, from the Secretariat. It's been a very long process, but we're there, and we look forward to the future. Um, so thank you again so much for all your great support. Um, I um, look it, speaking about the future. I wanted to raise two points. First of all, I wanted to um, support fully uh, my colleague from Colombia. Um, I do believe that training is a, a very important part, especially for the young um, um, IGFs like us. Uh, we need to build capacity. We also need to um, help people understand how to, um, 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 how to talk about the IGF. We had a session about that today. And uh, how to build um, further capacity, how to understand um, uh, what different agencies do to um, the UN agencies to support internet governance and multi-stakeholderism. Um, but at the same time, um, having said that and having supported Colombia, I also am pretty worried about the level of um, sort of work and obligations which are being put on IGFs. Although I agree that uh, the toolkit is a fantastic, a fantastic tool um, and we, we use it. Um, we do have to remember that we are, um, uh, we're 
all in a vast majority of cases working as volunteers and there's only so much uh, we, we can do so I just wanted to uh, point out that um, when we build capacity and we build new tools we also have to think about the internal capacity we have thank you very much Igor, thank you very much. I think we can go to the Italian IGF, then to Felix, and then maybe we can move to another agenda. So, uh, hi to everybody. And um, I, uh, also I want to, to thank uh, Hanja for the big job uh, she has done for coordinating NRI. And um, I, I think uh, um, it's important for NRIs to uh, share best practice. I think uh, this wa should be one of the um, of the, the best value that uh, we need. So I think it could be important to have uh, a, um, a database or something that uh, for each uh, topic like uh, cyber security, artificial intelligence and so on, this the best practice, uh, the worries uh, and so on that have been discussing during the national uh, initiative. I, I think this could be a, a very big uh, added value for all NRIs, okay. Thank you very much, Concentina. And now maybe we can just uh, have a final remarks from uh, Felix. And Thank you, Anya. Um, Felix Mangwangu, I'm the coordinator of the IGF uh, DR Congo. Uh, first, uh, thank you for the support uh, that give, you the, give us the um, opportunity to make uh, the IGF Congo real. Uh, we organized this year the first edition after some year of uh, pushing. Um, the second thing, um, I'm really impressed what I heard, uh, I heard about um, the Holland um, government support uh, because uh, from our rea reality in Congo, uh, from to make it real, uh, we, uh, how can I say that? We contribute ourselves uh, the only contribution for the government was uh, the, the, the infrastructure uh, support, but uh, for the every um, other section, that uh, personal contribution and the contribution of our executive uh, secretary, that to give you the, the, the uh, how can I say that, to explain you, explain you that uh, we've, we are really, really involved and motivated to m make it uh, make the IGF DRC a um, um, how can I say that a real partner for the government and all the uh, operator in uh, DRC. I've got some recommendation of uh, the mag. I will be quick. Uh, first of one uh, that um <coughs> we propose that uh, every um, before every IGF regional IGF. Uh, um, evaluation uh, meeting between all uh, national IGF uh, uh, integrating uh, executive secretary and uh, uh, MAG coordinator, national MAG coordinator. Uh, the second one is that uh, after uh, every uh, IGF, uh, regional IGF, uh, we uh, also um, recommend a collaboration between uh, all national, sous-regional, um, that's sous-regional, yeah, sous-regional coordinator, sorry for my French, and all uh, executive secretary. The third one is um, for the participation of uh, all those um, uh, members and coordinator, we um, are asking to um, uh, African Union to support uh, that uh, uh, initiative. Um, the third, uh, we need to produce um, some, how um, can uh, okay, I say that, um, uh, data and, um, uh, and we, um, uh, we are asking uh, also to, to all country to contribute uh, uh, with uh, every data of uh, their country to, to make um, a, a database, a sous-regional database. And the last one, for all those content we need to, to translate that, 
uh, in um, every language of uh, the Union nation. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Felix, for these remarks. Uh, I don't see any raised hands on this agenda item, and I think it's going to overlap maybe with the second and third agenda items, so maybe just to park your um, remarks for those following items. So if you would agree, then I would move uh, to another item asking you should or can all NRIs come up with the topic of mutual interest for the NRIs joint substantive work for next year? This was actually a question that raised uh, on several of our virtual meetings, and I just thought it would be good to use this momentum where we are, a lot of us are face to face present uh, in one room <laughs> to see whether it would be possible to at least come up as early as possible in 2018 with a topical at least framework that could be reflected by the NRI's uh, agendas uh, that could be predicted to be reflected by the NRI's agendas given that the process is uh, completely bottom up. So this is a bit sensitive area, but, uh, but uh, since the proposal came from you, I wanted to uh, have it discussed here. So maybe go to go to the IGFUSA, Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn Kate, speaking for the IGF USA. Um, Anya, just, um, I just make a point of clarification, but before I do that, always remember to turn your mic off when you're, turn your mic off, sorry. Um, I need to make a, a point of clarification. Um, we are bottom up and we are consensus based and we are not in a position to agree to any kind of hierarchy, any kind of hierarchical imposition or structure. Each country needs to be able to decide for itself and sub-region and region. So I'm not saying that others might not be interested in trying to come up with a common um, approach, but for us, we will always have to do uh, broad consultation. So um, having said that, what I can say is that we participated along with others in identifying the eight topics that became the consultative sessions. So it's very possible that we could, that the Secretariat Focal Point could propose a short time for us to consult to come up with some commonality. But we wouldn't be able to do that uh, from IGF USA's perspective. We wouldn't be able to do that until we did that consultation. Um, so that would be my immediate point. But I just want to say that <coughs> in the two NRI sessions that I moderated, the one on fake news, disinformation, and misinformation, and the one on access, there was a s very strong entrance. Mary is one of the, the organizers. I don't know if Omar is here. There was very strong interest in continuing work together on that topic, perhaps even at, in, their nat in our national IGFs. Uh, and then coming back in 2018. That doesn't mean to impose it on all, but, you know, I mean, just coming out of those sessions, there was interest in, uh, in those topics. So perhaps, you know, hearing from others about whether they would be able to comment on a single topic, I, I, I think it would be hard for us to do that uh, from the IGF USA, but it was not hard for us to uh, come up with uh, two priorities for the consultative sessions. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Yes, this is exactly why I'm asking, because uh, we have two different views uh, among the group. Uh, any other comments to this? So I don't see any uh, raised hands, uh, and I'm following also the WebEx. I don't see any except uh, Alexander telling me to speak louder. I don't see any comments uh, on this matter. So with this, then I would uh, leave maybe this question for our next virtual meeting beginning of January in 2018 to discuss it. And I do agree that it is a very sensitive area given that the bottom-up process is actually the biggest value of the uh, NRI's collaborative process. So let us maybe leave it for, uh, for our virtual consultations. And with that, maybe move to the third agenda item uh, that is very much connected to this first item that we discussed, and that is what should be the nature of future collaboration among the NRIs uh, and also uh, between the NRIs and the IGF. And I think Marilyn tackled already the point on continuation of the collaborative sessions. 
But I'm, it Mar it's Marilyn, I'm gonna make a follow-up. Not everyone was here in our, con in our consultative session in 2015. We debated this issue, Marilyn Kate speaking, uh, we debated this issue very thoroughly. And I think it would be really helpful if we went back and pulled out the transcript when uh, Ambassador Carklins was the MAG chair because he explained the nature of the relationship and perhaps that would be good, Anya, to share with all of our newcomers. And at that time, we came up with a phraseology that's, that we then agreed to. We've changed a lot, but we said that the IGF reflects into the NRIs and that the NRIs reflect into the IGF. And that's kind of an elegant way of giving the flexibility of sometimes maybe being very tightly aligned and other times really respecting the bottom-up global nature. But again, I'll just reiterate this. IGF USA would not be in a position to agree to a hierarchical reporting. Um, I know that because I have a U.S. passport. Marilyn, thank you very much. Going to the Italian IGF, Conchitina. I think it could be useful to have uh, um, just a few topics of common uh, interest uh, and maybe each national uh, initiative can add more topics to discuss. I think it could be useful. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, this is my point. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any other comments? Yes, Mary. Uh, my name is Mary Guduma, uh, West African IGF. Um, Question three, what should be the nature of future collaboration? We have started, is a network we have in, and if it is not broken, do we need to fix it? So if it's working well, we continue the way we are doing. And uh, NRIs and the IGF, we are part of the IGF, there's no two ways about it, and the IGF have been feeding into us and we have been feeding into the national level. And we bring our perspectives to the IGF. The, if the global IGF continues, it's beating and doing all the talking and debating without taking it to the national level, I don't think the impact and uh, w the, the acceptance will grow. So it is the local, IGF or national IGF that is actually shooting up the, although there are other things that happen, but a lot of it, a lot of um, acceptance is coming because we do it at the national level. So I don't know, I, I can't, uh, well, to my own understanding or to the West Africa, uh, we need to understand what the, what the collaboration you are talking about or relationship. We had in previously asked whether the, the, the national or the regional IGF will fit to the, the global IGF. But we have always been said that we are different initiatives. But at our continental level and at our regional level, we feed in from the local because we report whatever happens at the local level, at the regional and at the, at the continental level, not at the global level. Armenia IGF. I will speak on behalf of uh, sub-regional uh, Southeastern European uh, IGF CD. Uh, we do have uh, calls during the year with national IGF. So as a, a sub-regional, um, we uh, continue and we see that there is a need uh, among national IGFs to have a forum, uh, to have a platform where we can continue discussions within a year. And we do have regular calls uh, and we share our experiences, practices, and there are many uh, countries which are in formation yet. Uh, so sharing experiences with the experienced uh, national IGFs with those that want to uh, have uh, and establish a dialogue uh, in their countries, this helps a lot with them. Uh, and uh, we have in a region an understanding that we want to talk, to continue to talk to each other and share our practices. So this is uh, from CDIC in a broader framework of interaction.
much, Liana. Yes, Sandra, you're at the camera. Thank you, Anya, and also let me congratulate you for the extre extremely valuable work you have done over the last two years. Uh, I think without you, this network would have not emerged so valuable and so quickly. Um, I'm coordinator of a, glo of a regional IGF, and we are constantly thinking what our role could be in respect to the global IGF and also in respect to the regional IGFs. And um, we will have a retreat in January soon, where we will also discuss this issue and rethink what can our role be and how we could improve. Our uh, constant efforts are to support the internet governance debate, the global internet governance debate as such, and we believe that the national uh, dimension in this debate is actually the most valuable part because it really is the bottom-up process when you bring up the, the topics from the bottom to the global IGF. We see ourselves as the regional IGF as a kind of a, a linkage between the national and the global IGF. We would like to help really to uh, bring those topics up to the global IGF. Um, what we did uh, in the past in Eurodic, and I think we will continue, is um, that we will offer a kind of a assembly or gathering of, of national European IGFs. And uh, I know that for the secretariat, for the IGF secretariat, it's very difficult to attend all the nationals uh, you are, are going to be invited to. Um, I could think that uh, maybe also the other regional IGFs um, offer a same kind of gathering and then it might be less burden for the global IGF secretariat to travel to five, six or, or ten uh, regional for us and meet there the, the nationals which uh, may be otherwise, um, or which you might not otherwise not going to meet because it would be too much travel to, to go to all of them. So I think this could be also a, a role the regionals could, could play so that they really are the platform to gather the nationals to bring up the topics and also be the meeting point for the global and the uh, national fora. Um, Many times uh, my ideas have been misinterpreted as uh, kind of introducing a kind of hierarchy. This is definitely not our intent, that we want to introduce a hierarchy and that we intend that uh, there is a reporting uh, mechanism between national, regional, global. That's, that's uh, not our intent. Um, but I think there is a lot of uh, coordination work and interlinkage work and bringing up the topics as a regional. We have maybe a little bit more uh, resources than some of the nationals which are just information or which are very young initiatives and uh, here we would really like to help. Um, we also, with the kind support of the IGFSA and other sponsors, we offer re regularly travel support and here we have a great emphasis on inviting those who are coordinating the national IGFs because in Europe also not all the people have the resources to travel to the various places we are uh, visiting with our regional forum. So this is also among our efforts to uh, really bring them together and use the funds we have available wisely in this respect and uh, really enhance and uh, strengthen the global IGF debate. And the last word, I think these uh, inter, uh, these collaborative sessions as they have been introduced this year, um, I really and we really appreciated this new kind of format um, I hope we can see this uh, developing in the next IGF. Um, I really believe this is an additional element of setting the agenda for the global IGF besides the call for workshops. And I also think that this is actually a, maybe a better way even to really bring the messages from the nationals to the global IGF up. And here also our Eurodic was the facilitator uh, of one of these sessions, we were not imposing content, we were just uh, helping to define a topic and then inviting the nationals. And I think this uh, really, c this kind of uh, session format has the potential to be developed uh, in the future. And I would very much uh, like to thank for um, the MAC and also the Secretariat for making that possible this year. Thank you. Sandra, thank you very much for being very clear on, on certain points which I think were necessary. Uh, any other comments from the from the NRI colleagues before we give the floor to the next chair? Yes, Diego Brazil, our chair. Um, thank you, Anya. Uh, first, let me join everybody in the room in 
just like congratulations for the amazing job that you've been doing ahead of us. And actually also to thank you for your resilience uh, in just like uh, supporting all, all annoying people who that we are in the room because we are always annoying you with our emails and, and stuff. And thank you so much for that. Uh, as I told you yesterday, Anya, and I just want to like, uh, I would like to share it with the group. Uh, I think that for 2018, and I would just like to go back slightly to topic uh, number two, we think to start uh, uh, thinking of, of uh, more structured ways of um, assessing uh, consensus and uh, of assessing uh, the things that we want for the network, as Mario would say. Uh, I think that, for instance, instead of having a main session of three hours in which every single different project wants to present what happened to the IGF audience, we should work more with documenting those, those things all, uh, uh, during the year and should try to use these opportunities in which we are together face to face to build concrete documents and concrete things. And maybe if we could start operating uh, by subgroups, thematic subgroups, uh, regional subgroups and, and things as such, we could uh, be able to yield more cre concrete results of the activities of this network. And I, I think that the way that we use the space in the, in the global IGF, I'm not seeing you on, yeah, sorry. Uh, the way that we use uh, the space in the global IGF should be um, uh, arranged, uh, bearing in mind that idea of more structured with moderation uh, professional moderation maybe, uh, and using specific methodologies that we can come up together in our first meeting in January uh, in order to, 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 to sort of deepen the way that, that our processes and, and, and our workflows for 2018. Uh, additionally, uh, I just want to, to congratulate everybody um, who took uh, the burden of creating in the last minute specific workshops for the NRIs. Uh, but I would like to highlight, and that was our personal experience, uh, we had a very, very fruitful interaction with the Portuguese uh, IGF, but a lot of different uh, projects said that they would help us in putting people in the, in the workshops and creating the documents, and in, in, in the last minute, actually, two or three projects actually worked for one session. Uh, and th I think that is a matter of the way that we do not have a structured workflow. And, and that would be my two cents for this discussion. And I would like to thank you once again for all the amazing job that you've been doing ahead of us and uh, for your guidance, but also for your resiliency. Uh, additionally, one uh, other thing, uh, Marilyn said that we should use our mailing list uh, and maybe we should even split mailing lists for having different purposes. And I, th I think that for 2018, we should create a kind of conduct that is shared and signed by all of us um, to guide the way that we use those mailing lists. Because it's not, it's not only um, some, some sort of a showcasing and other things that, that actually create an overload of messages that we receive, but sometimes we see very weird interactions in the list which should not be taken place in the list. And I think that we should even empower you as a sort of moderator for, for the list. To, to, to enforce some rules that we agree among ourselves. Thank you very much. Diego, thank you very much. This was very to the point and with concrete suggestions. Uh, let's go to the uh, Asia Pacific Regional IGFs, IGF USA, and then we will come to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anya, for giving me the floor. I apologize first for my voice. I've lost it throughout the IGF week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my name is <laughs> My name is Jennifer Chung. I am Secretariat for the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. First, I'd like to echo all my colleagues around here in congratulating Anya yourself for being such a great focal point for us, doing so much good work and, and allowing us to be able to have this network to collaborate and share best practices. Um, I guess two, two points I wanted to really highlight and I also want to echo other colleagues is the development and publication of the toolkits were very, very valuable. I think th that encapsulates a lot of the very good work that the NRIs have created from ground up. It's a consensus 
um, based uh, work that has never really been uh, formally uh, capsulated and having it at the global level gives it a prominence which is extremely important in highlighting this good work that we do at the NRIs. Um, the second thing I really wanted to say is, and I think Diego also did talk about it, is the development of the collaboration sessions. I think that is a, a really good uh, movement forward because we're discussing substantive and pertinent issues that a lot of the NRIs are discussing within its, um, their national and also sub-regional and regional uh, levels. And having this uh, uh, space in the global IGF is very important because I think each NRI has its own view to bring, which is extremely interesting to even just participants around the global IGF. They might find something that really speaks to them or they have c opinions on these uh, uh, very hot topic issues that they realize, oh, so maybe uh, Japan IGF is talking about this and Vietnam IGF is talking about something else. Um, that's very, very important, and seeing if we can leverage that into some kind of substantive uh, intersessional work between the NRIs is also very, very important. I think having the collaboration lines open and the communication lines open facilitated by, of course, the IGF secretary at Focal Point uh, is extremely valuable to all of us. So I'll keep my comments short and, and thank all the colleagues for this great collaboration. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jennifer. So sorry for your voice. <laughs> Dustin, I just feel safe. And I can repeat. <laughs> Thank you, Anya. Um, my name is Dustin Phillips, and I just wanted to provide some observations on the main session. Uh, I think it's great the increased collaboration between the NRIs and their ability to come together at this global IGF. And as the rapporteur on the, the main session, it was great to see the common themes come out of that, but I think that limiting it to only two and a half hours, especially with that hour gap in the middle, made it hard for a, a truly cohesive session, and I think that we could have got a lot more out of it if it was a continuous slot with maybe a little bit more time added to it as well. So. Thank you very much. Uh, now let's go. You, you will tell me the name because I'm not quite sure. Hello, my name is Gonella Astbrink. Um, I am an APC Amazon Fellow and also on the multi stakeholder steering group for the APR IGF. And I just wanted to make some observations in regard to inclusion. And uh, obviously we want to include as many parts of a community as possible at the IGF, and that includes people with disability. Um, I know that um, the Secretariat has worked hard to ensure that um, uh, venues and so forth are as, as accessible as possible. And <clears throat> I'm, I'm just um, wondering if there can be in future some way to um, have a person in the Secretariat trained in the issues and uh, that are uh, often barriers to people with disability, and that could be physical disability, people with hearing impairments, people with visual impairments, and, and so that um, uh, the pathway to being able to participate is fully there. Uh, from the APRIGF experience, uh, we, um, we specify that uh, uh, the host uh, needs to have accessible uh, venue and um, this time we negotiated with the host venue to ensure that the venue was uh, accessible uh, in a number of different ways and, and that proved successful in getting assistance from the university's um, disability services office who could then assess the facilities on site and that that was very helpful so I'm happy to continue that discussion with the secretariat and and Jennifer might want to uh, make any other comments um, in regard to um, the APR IGF planning thank you Thank you very much, Gunilla, for these comments. Um, I will, I'm sorry that Shangata is not here. He would be probably the most appropriate contact to respond to this question. But uh, this year we were very much with limited. 
uh, staff, given the overall conditions, and I, I know we communicated also and uh, with Andrea that, uh, yes, we had um, just a limited physical capacity of, of staff to accommodate, unfortunately, people with disabilities, and, um, and given also the, the venue's capacity, it didn't help. But, uh, but maybe Lynn wants to. No, I just want to um, add that I have spoken to Chengatai about it because it's been quite a, you know, a long thread here over the last few weeks. And um, we've agreed, along with Andrea, that we will kick off early in the next year um, a plan to actually build a much more robust um, response, if you will, to, to this and you know, taking into account all your marks as well as Anella. So Chengatai has, in fact, already committed that okay. we would work through like a task force or something. Thank you, Lynn, and very much thank you for your understanding. Uh, maybe now to go to uh, Sidik and Armenia IGF and then Trinder and Tobago. Thank you, Anya, Liana Galsan. Uh, I'd like to uh, reinforce that there is a need for more uh, visible support from UNDAS and IGF Secretariat in terms of that we would like to see you in our events. I would, uh, I would follow up what uh, Sandra said from Euridic perspective that I understand that for IGF Secretariat, it would be maybe difficult to travel to all national IGFs, but yet in those countries, in developing countries, it is really very important to see uh, the support from the UN, uh, from UN DES and IGF Secretariat. Uh, for the government, uh, it is very important to see the support. So if you could um, be in, uh, engaged in the event, uh, national events, it would really uh, give um, great visibility and credibility for the uh, national IGFs and regionals as well. So that was a need uh, for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Liana. And um, we talked about it internally, and you know that Armenia IGF is my regret this year among a couple of where we planned to attend, and unfortunately nobody could attend due to the schedule conflict. Yes. Um, I think uh, Tracy, Trinidad, and Tobago, then, yes, Sri Lanka. So, Tracy. Yes, and I thank you very much. I'd like to just, of course, echo, obviously, the, the um, great support that um, the Secretariat and the focal point to yourself, Anya, and um, others like Marilyn, and of course even Lynn have provided to um, new IGFs like ourselves in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, however, we, we do want to, to express the, the desire that um, small countries like ourselves have peculiar challenges in putting on events like this. Um, we do have very limited support with, within country to, to actually get these kind of events going um, and reaching out to our partners. Um, I don't want to name, I don't want to shame, name and shame, but they're, 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 um, with the exception of the IGFSA, uh, we have challenges getting funding from people you might think might fund um, these type of IGFs. And um, so it, it's a struggle. And I don't know if there's any way that um, this can be um, assisted because we have struggles with um, remote participation um, tools. We have struggles with getting venues to, to facilitate these, these sorts of events, correct venues, you know, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I think for smaller countries like ourselves, we really do need some level of um, special attention, that, I don't know, that's affirmative action, that's the way to phrase it. Um, we see other IGFs doing very well, and happy for that, um, you know, large IGFs, uh, regional IGFs, and, and <laughs> national IGFs, whereas we somehow are struggling um, to put on these events. So uh, if there's some way that this can be um, assisted, I, I really want to, to make that case here today. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I think um, it's well noted and it will require several of our consultations to come up maybe with a strategic approach to it, but definitely there is a will on this side and obviously among all the NRIs to address that. So thank you. Uh, I think Sri Lanka IGF and then we will go to Japan and then uh, to Croatia. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mahishar from Sri Lanka IGF. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the Secretariat to the support that they do for us, especially uh, recognizing us and especially giving the, all the needed facilities and needed uh, guidelines to us. Uh, meantime, I would like to address an issue or a challenge that we are facing at the moment that there are organizations and individuals who are trying to reach us or the national 
regional, uh, I don't know how, uh, how about uh, regional ones, uh, regarding the national ones. Uh, <laughs> they are trying to uh, come to us and uh, hijack the multiple, uh, mul our process, multi-stakeholder process, and uh, t trying to evaluate us and trying to give their opinions to how they, we should work. So this is a challenge that we are facing at the moment. They are kind of organizations, civil organizations and uh, NGOs. So I think this may be a problem for other uh, national uh, in initiatives. So we, if there is something, please, uh, we need help at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Maheshwara. Very quick follow up on that. I really want to reinforce the comment that was just made. And um, I know we need to go on with other things, but perhaps we'll take that up on as a working item. There are um, well-meaning um, organizations that uh, perceive that the NRIs and work at the NRIs on their agenda is a way for them to advance their agenda, but they are perhaps not understanding the situation politically or otherwise in a country and uh, they may actually um, uh, harm the reputation of the NRI inadvertently. They may convey uh, what is actually misinformation because they're not very knowledgeable. So they, um, they're what I call the parachute team. They fly, they parachute in and study something and then they parachute out and write a report and apply for uh, aid funding or other kinds of funding. I am not saying that that is ill-attentioned by any means, and I am not trying to pick on any particular development entity. But I think we need to help have standards ourselves so that when a, um, and this, when, when a, a small NRI who's very busily working is approached by somebody from outside that says, oh, I have sponsorship money, I have this, I have that, that there's some way of kind of understanding what the underlying purpose is. We listen to everyone, so that doesn't mean you would say no, but you also would need to have respectful treatment. Marilyn, thank you. I think uh, I said Natasha question, IGF, and uh, I didn't see any raised hand, so maybe that would be the last one. My name is Natasha Glavor. I'm coordinator of Croatian IGF. And uh, I would like to say that I appreciate help from Meg and Icon and Secretariat. And uh, we are also very thankful to IGF supporting organization uh, that helped us organize our events. And I would also like to uh, thank Anya for her uh, great work and tremendous support she gives uh, to the NRI community. Uh, um, from my perspective, um, it's not uh, always easy uh, to explain our management and our institutions, uh, ministries and uh, whoever we need some um, um, uh, if there are someone who would uh, uh, let us go to some uh, meeting like this one, it's not always uh, easy to understand why uh, it's important to, to be part of those meetings. Uh, and uh, so uh, explaining uh, why IGF uh, is important is not always easy. So uh, I prepared some documents that uh, in hopefully uh, easy way uh, say why it is important. And uh, um, Maybe this kind of institutional help uh, would be uh, more than welcome in, in our case. So I don't know if uh, there is possibility uh, that we uh, get some, I don't know, formal um, support or something like that that would uh, explain uh, why IGF uh, as an initiative I is important and why uh, Croatia is, as, a, as a country or whatever other country is, uh, uh, should, should be part of, of that initiative. And if I can uh, just uh, quickly move back to the question number two, um, I think uh, from my perspective it's useful uh, to have a, a topic of mutual interest uh, for um, various IGFs and RIs. 
uh, and I really don't know how to implement that um, and uh, not uh, jeopardize the, the process of a bottom-up approach. Uh, uh, why I think it's useful, because uh, in the main session for NRI that we had yesterday, um, uh, we shared our position on, on the same topic, and uh, uh, my opinion is uh, that to have a broader consensus on, on one topic, uh, it would be um, uh, it would be important to have uh, that topic part uh, of uh, agenda of, of our IGF meeting, or maybe it doesn't have to be IGF meeting, but just to have that, uh, to know uh, uh, that topic well in advance, so we can um, ensure somehow uh, some, some kind of um, uh, broader consensus on the topic and be able to speak uh, clearly on behalf of, of our uh, IGF community. Thank you. Natasha, thank you very much. Uh, Japan IGF, and then we will go to the youth-like IGF. And I hope that could be the last comment because we are, we are 15 minutes over time, I think. Hi, I'll be brief. This is Keisuke, Keisuke Kamimura speaking for Japan, or Japan IGF. Let me comment on what kind of support do we need from MAG, the Secretariat, and the US, UN. From a point of view, I don't think we, uh, I don't think many players in Japan need much financial support, but we, of course, we do appreciate if we have, but, uh, but if government and the industry find internet governance is necessary, uh, they will spend what they think they need. Uh, and it, in turn, enables civil society to, civil society to participate. So please keep sending a strong message that the internet should be governed in the multi-stakeholder based approach and the principle should be replicated at the national level. This is more or less a personal observation, but, it, but I believe this helps quite a lot in Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keiko. Uh, Alison? Uh, I'm, Al I'm Alison Jones, representing the Youth Like a Jeff. Uh, I would just like to ask the colleagues here to take in account the importance of your participation when you build your national and regional forum. Perhaps not just like a participant, but also like in the organizing of the forum. Uh, participating in the Brazil Brazilian forum was fundamental to change the way I look to the internet and its particularities. I think uh, other youths uh, deserve to have this opportunity. Thank you, Alison. One word, Mary. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, as the requirement support, um, uh, we want to ask whether it's possible that the letter that the General Secretary of UN writes and puts on the website, whether special letters could be sent to our government um, from the on the side of whoever that will sign it, and it will create, it will help with what um, the, the Croatian IGF said, so that the high level people will be able to understand. And we want them to be in the room when we are sharing uh, the, the main session of, uh, of the NRIs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you. Amen, I think uh, <laughs> you are in the spotlight. <laughs> Okay, I mean, I can, I can do a quick uh, summary. So I've, uh, I've heard a lot of uh, praise, first of all, which is, which is always nice. Uh, praise more for the people next to me on the podium, not so much for me, but that's good. It also shows that we're not doing everything wrong when we are selecting our people, so that's good. Um, because we hear that as well. Uh, the, the other point that I want to make is, um, you see, DESA, for those of you who, who may not know, DESA is purely headquarters based. We don't really have a presence in the field and we don't really have a regional or national presence. Uh, and very often we are, we are perceived as sitting in an ivory tower and we're perceived as uh, churning out documents and, and uh, especially toolkits that uh, are then supposed to be treated as the Bible or the Holy Grail and everybody is supposed to, to look and admire those documents. Um, and what I'm seeing here is the exact opposite. And it's, it's very, very refreshing and encouraging to see that uh, you amongst yourself have developed 
your own tools and guidelines for yourselves with a little bit of facilitation, and I'm not by no means minimizing the role of, of Anya and, and Chen Letai and the Secretariat and Lynn and Marilyn and everybody else. Um, so it's very nice to see that this actually works, that uh, with very little facilitation from our side, you amongst yourself can, can pr produce these kind of documents of that, of that quality and you can translate them into the six languages which we in New York always have problems doing, honestly, because it's a very expensive exercise for us. Um, so I'm, I'm taking this message back to, to my, my, my director and to my division. Um, I'm also taking the message back from, from Salah that it, um, it would probably be a, a very good idea, and I, I fully endorse that, to link the work of, of, of the NRIs somehow to the development agenda in general, to bring this to the High Level Political Forum, maybe to bring it to the uh, SDI Forum, the Science Technology Innovation Forum. And I will go back to New York and, and discuss this because I think it's a, you as a, as a group are a, actually a very good best practice for, for this South-South, North-South, whatever cooperation. Um, then in terms of, of support, so I've, um, I've heard and, and it's, it's nice to hear from, from Eurodic that they actually have dedicated funds from what I'm understanding for traveling people and participate and allow people to participate in, in national IGFs. Um, we do not have that much funding as you know and um, I've heard Arnold's uh, comments that uh, he wants us to use this, this really, really great contribution by the Netherlands for these kind of purposes and the message is, is um, loud and clear and is understood. Um, we do have, however, um, for those of you who have had, had looked at the, the project document of, of the current phase of the IGF, uh, we have actually uh, foreseen um, funding for capacity building and specifically for, for focusing on uh, regional and national IGFs. Um, so what we also put in there is that we, we sh this should come upon request. So we would encourage you, maybe through your governments, and I hear that there is always, or there could potentially be a problem of, of being visible vis-a-vis -vis the governments. So if you and your government would request support from the IGF Secretariat, we can definitely look into, into funding these kind of activities. Um, this is not a donors meeting, and uh, if it would be a donors meeting, people would rightly accuse me of sounding like a broken record. Um, we do not have sufficient funds, so if there are, um, if, if you, who I, I somehow consider our main fundraisers, if you can convey the message to your governments that this initiative needs support and it, it, it can be channeled through us, it doesn't have to be channeled through us, it can go directly to you. Um, please let us know, please convey this message and, and make sure that we can, we can help and we can, we can support you, I mean, and that's definitely beyond moral support. I mean, we definitely have also some, some financial means to help. So the, the IGF Secretariat up until the middle of this year was, um, financially in a bit of a crisis. We are a, a little better off right now. We're not really outside, out of the, out of the, uh, the hole there, but it's getting better. So we are, we are definitely hearing you that you would like to get access to this kind of support. I think I'll leave it there. Armin, thank you very much. Um, Marilyn would like I'm in, uh, Marilyn Kate speaking. Thank you for giving me the floor. I am not trying to speak on behalf of any other um, NRI who is here, and I am not telling you that this is a problem for uh, the IGF USA for us to, this would, we would not be asking for this support. However, I am going to tell you that based on my close collaboration with a number of the NRIs, it is not uh, either practical or helpful to ask them to go to their government to ask for endorsement okay. for requesting this. Um, and perhaps we could think 
separately that the chair and Anya and you and I uh, about um, um, e sort of following the model of the IGFSA. The IGF Support Association, if they are approved by the Secretariat then, and they're from a developing country, then they get the small grants. So maybe we could come up with that kind of idea so that you know there's authentication. But it's very difficult for many of them to get, get this kind of access. After getting this kind of training, they may be much better able to get, have the visibility and to get the access. Understood. Thank you, Marilyn. Any last comments from your side before we deal with the floor to the chair? Uh, Mary. Um, I, I just want to follow up from what he has said from the Ondesa, and we want to see further collaboration between the Ondesa and the IGF Secretariat. Probably if, just to follow up with what um, Ma uh, Marilyn has said, those, those uh, NRIs that will find it difficult to go to their government, but there are some that are being organized by their government, so those that will find it difficult, maybe working through the IGF Secretariat will be better mm -hmm. than working from uh, uh, on this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mary. A and I think quickly, Julian. Yes, just to second uh, Marilyn's uh, comment uh, about the uh, uh, importance for us uh, to receive all the support from the IGF Support Association, which has been very valuable for our process in Colombia. Thank you very much, Julian. And with this, uh, I think we can take the final remarks by the chair of the MAG and conclude this meeting. Uh, thank you. And thank you for a very, very helpful and very informative session. And I took some notes, and of course, we have the, the transcript as well. Um, just a couple of points I'd, I'd like to hit quickly, um, following up a little bit on this last discussion on funding. I think when the uh, IGF was in initially um, kind of mandated, there were, you know, some assumptions made in, in different places. And in fact, there was no assumption in the Tunis agenda that there was a MAG. Um, that was another, um, you know, innovation, if you will, that came out because clearly you needed some sort of program committee activity to, um, to manage and oversee the annual IGF. Over time, of course, that work has expanded with all the intercessional activities, best practice forums, the major policy programs such as Connecting and Neighboring the Next Billions, <coughs> dynamic coalitions, and then, of course, the NRIs um, as, a, as another activity as well. Um, so one of the things we are, but in fact, the MAG charter does actually say we're responsible for fundraising. And I think that hasn't been something that the MAG's really been able to do all that well um, in past years. Um, partly, I think, because of some of the, the resource issues in, in the secretariat. Um, we tend to start far later than we'd like every year because of the delay in appointments of the MAG and the MAG chair every year, which is a significant block to us. Um, so we're working to fix that, and in fact, the process is really well advanced this year, and hopefully there will be little to no gap between the MAG, current MAG standing down and the new one standing up. Last year, there was a, almost a three-month gap, and the new MAG was appointed two days before the first physical MAG meeting. It means, of course, that you don't get a chance to really do proper induction. It also means you're your um, time frame is shortened if, in fact, you want to have the program done by the middle of the year. <laughs> so to the extent we could have a MAG, you know, December, very early January, that gives us, a, you know, an extra three months, which will be tremendous. Um, so, so I think we can pick some of that kind of fundraising um, discussion up as well and, and try and find a better way to address it over the coming, coming years. Um, there were also some other growing pains this year, I think, in the MAG, and that was as we look to all the work that's being done intercessionally, the best practice forums have, you know, stood up some great activities, some great work, dynamic coalitions, the same thing, and of course, the tremendous growth in the number of NRIs and the very impressive growth in all the outputs and activities of the, of the NRIs as well. So in one of the working groups, the working group on multi-year strategic work program, one of the things we did was um, prepare a document which, when I get a few extra seconds, I'll actually send out to the MAG and, and for forward distribution, um, that actually identifies all the component pieces of an IGF meeting. 
and it also says who has responsibility for overseeing them or directing them. The words we use are different depending on which activity we're, we're talking about. Um, any guiding documents, the links are there as well. And then there's a second um, component of the document which says these are all the intercessional pieces of work that make up the IGF ecosystem and these are how they tie to the annual meeting. That was meant to be a baseline document just defining current practice so that it would um, aid not only the MAG coming in, but of course everybody else in the IGF ecosystem so we understood the, the component pieces and where they fit. Um, that is, is um, I'm expecting the MAG will want to use that as a basis for a discussion on are all those roles accurately described, appropriately described, are they what we need when we look forward to the next eight years of, of the IGF? But they just document current practice. They did not make any recommendations on what should be done before. That's something we need to do through the entire IGF ecosystem. So one of the things I think would be um, really helpful would be when that comes out for the NRIs to really look at that document and think about what do you need to help you do the most you can in your activity? Where are the appropriate um, support points or appropriate connections or feeds or um, from uh, to and from the MAG or to and from other parts of the um, IGF ecosystem, to and from perhaps the best practice forums and things. So you know, to the extent you can get a start on some of those discussions earlier, you'll come in at the front end of the discussions with a MAG, which should actually help us um, go through those discussions, you know, frankly, a little more smoothly than last year and um, hopefully um, much earlier in the year as well, which I think will facilitate all of the programming and all of your activities um, over the course of the year and particularly as you look forward to the, to the global IGF. Um, and uh, Anya is very well aware of that work. In fact, the document came out of the Secretariat, so I mean, I think we can, can stand that up quite quickly. It's just important that we hear from you in terms of what you need, what would be helpful. And of course, the earlier in the year that that's heard, um, the smoother the whole process will be and the more time we'll have time to, to look through it appropriately. So I just want to thank everybody again very, very, very much. I mean, it is, so, as so many people have said, you know, um, one of the most concrete outcomes, outputs from the entire IGF process. And it is fundamentally important to the advancement of the internet and the advancement of so many issues um, impacted by internet governance that we all obviously care so so very deeply about. And I think with that, there's a few words to be said. Um, I, I believe Mary Aduma has a uh, small presentation she would like to make. Now, now, Anya, you, you have to tell them what the button says. Tell what the button says. She gave the me a button. Support the NRIs, <laughs> um, of course. But um, I think I'm all red now. <laughs> You're supposed to save your words for the end and now. Thank you, Mary. Now I don't know what to say, but uh, thank you so much. This is really very nice of you. But thank you really for making it very pleasant for me to work with all of you during the year. I think that's the most important when you work on such a globally spread team with such a pleasant personalities and not an easy task at all. I think it's very complex, but I think uh, uh, you're doing just a great and very valuable work, first of all, for your respective communities. And uh, I think it was said also in reiterated today that on our side there is so much will and so much energy uh, to help sort of bring visibility of their work and make the communities um, kind of benefiting more from from your expertise and from your valuable outcomes. Thank you so much. And this is just so nice. <laughs> but I do have to say, oh, I'm, uh, I, I don't want uh, Alexander from the Macedonian IGF, Roberto from Bolivian IGF, and Abdel Galil from Chad IGF, they were with us the whole time on WebEx um, to kind of tell me that I didn't mention them. And also Roberto commented that he thinks and he agrees that it is very hard to come up with a, that unique topic that, but that maybe the burden could be on the regional IGFs for, for that role. So 
Um, it's a very long comment, so I will summarize it for the list so that you can see the whole context, but I think it's important to have it here. Thank you so much, and uh, see you inside the venue. Thank you. And thank you, Lynn and our man, and Cheng, that I unfortunately needed to leave. <laughs>